Welcome back to another video by Mallory. In this section, We're going to continue to talk about Chapter 14, which is entitled Politics and Government, and specifically the military use of IT. So, in the military, um, nowadays, training software has been implemented um, in vast quantities, and there's a lot of developments with it, and there are many different methods that are being used to increase um, specific softwares to benefit um, and make the military the best it can be. So, first is virtual realities or simulators. Um, simulators just recreate a real-life experience. Um, they can be used in aircraft cockpits or in ships' bridges. Um, so they're used to train pilots and um, naval personnel. So through this, we can see the virtual environments um, being implemented and um, the military personnel being able to gain um, similar to real-life experience without any um, dangers that we would see in regular work. Um, so through this, they're, then they can be used, and they're highly detailed, so it's kind of like a video game, but much more in-depth. Um, they have multi-users, and they have a feedback loop, so the people can see what they had done wrong after. Um, it just allows them to obtain valuable experience, um, and, um, apply the theories and concepts that they have learned through their training. Uh, the virtual reality, um, the main example of it is called Future Immersive Training Environment. Um, and it implements um, reality headsets, which you, which are, yeah, I mean, you can see them in movies and um, people training for IT. They wrap around in the person's head and they're like goggle-like, and they have an image close to the soldier's eyes. Um, it just removes the world around them and allows them to be able to th be able through this to um, have the best sense of what would actually happen in the field. Um, tactile feedback d device attaches, they actually attach the soldier's legs and if they feel, um, they can actually feel if they're getting shot or if, in if they've been injured in some way. So, um, the next type is mixed reality systems and what they are, um, it's a combination of the physical training environments and implementing the IT systems. So it's a really good, um, compilation of the of both of these. Um, they can smell the explosions of the combat combat environment by seeing the, and then also at the same time see the hostiles projected on the walls. Um, so through this they get like a dual reality. Um, so a key advantage to all these systems is it's they're able to record the mission. So um, similar to a football player, a basketball player, a, a team um, recording and having game footage, they're, they're able to record and see what they did wrong and what they need to improve on them in, in the next time. Next is battlefield technology. Um, future warrior systems are known as wired soldiers and they use IT systems to um, gain a competitive advantage over the enemy by improving the communication of the soldiers and the interconnectedness of the soldiers. So through this we see that they're able to use the technology um, and the specific headsets to be able to um, to be able to use the key components of the augmented realities. Um, through this through this um, we're able to gain specific obstacles around corners without exposing themselves to the enemies. Um, it's hoped that by the information provided by these technologies, it'll, it'll reduce the danger, soldier, the danger the soldier faces in a regular, um, everyday environment. Another key component of the future warrior is uh, able to use um, GPS. So... Um, battlefield networks is where the information about all the assets, friendly or hostile, is kept and updated in real time. Next, we're going to talk about smart weapons, or unmanned area vehicles, which you may have heard of called as you, um, UAVs. Um, they're also called drones, and most common drones are 
um, are called the Predator and Reaper, and they're equipped with weapon systems to provide air support um, with friendly forces and infrared cameras to see through, dust, through the dust. Um, they're remotely controlled by pilots who could be thousands of kilometers away. Um, so through this, we can see as um, some of the specific examples is they're not always in military. Um, some unarmed versions of the Predator are used to monitor our borders. Um, precision guided weapons are also called smart bombs and they use infrared cameras and radar to guide um, the global positioning system to improve accurate um, to improve the accuracy further. Um, they were used in the Gulf Wars, Afghanistan, um, just just many different instances. Um, Next, we need to talk about um, military robots. Uh, they use a variety of military roles. Um, robots are used in bomb disposal um, plans, and they're remotely controlled by um, soldiers. It's a valuable tool that reduces the dangers that soldiers face in the real world. The SWORD robot, SWORD, is a high-speed robot equipped with weapons that can be remotely controlled by the soldiers. Um, so through this, we see another increased um, in military use of IT that can really help out the soldiers and reduce the danger for them. Next, we're going to talk about cyber terrorism and cyber warfare. So cyber warfare is the use of attacks on a computer network of an enemy to damage infrastructure um, of their different database systems, of their government. Um, it's a precursor to many attacks that have been happening. Um, common targets of cyber attacks would be power grids, water treatment plans, electricity, and, and anything along those lines. So viruses slash Trojan horses or other malware can be used as part of cyber warfare. Um, and then denial of service or DOS attacks can also be used to bring networks down. Um, in this in this specific um, DOS, um, attackers could gain access to the enemy system to monitor um, about defense plans, and um, this is actually one of the ways the Pentagon has been infected. Um, NASA and the U.S. Defense of Threat Re Re Reduction Agency um, uh, work with the Pentagon to make sure our power grid systems have. Um, the best capabilities of not being intruded, but they have been intruded in recent years. Um, so the Department of Co Commerce, Department of Energy, lost several terabytes of information in a series of hacking attacks in 2007. So there's also a, um, a fear of cyber terrorism, which terrorists attack the infrastructure using the methods that we just talked about. And Homeland Security claimed that the threat of cyber terrorism as serious attacks on the World Trade Center can be increasing, um, and cyber terrorism will, might be the new form of warfare. So, def and mainly it's because defending against cyber attacks are almost impossible. Um, you can't make anything 100% secure, and so even through strin um, really strict security measures, um, p things can still be infected. So those are some of the main uses of IT in the military. References. Thank you again for watching another video by Mallory.